Hello, come in, welcome, welcome. Today we shall look at a vampire, the eternal struggle. Yes, uh, we are looking at a blast from the past. This game originally launched in 1994 as the third ever collectible card game. This is the recent fifth edition set released in 2019-2020, I want to say. And it's basically a fan-created uh, edition of the classic card game. So all the artwork um, that they can has been reused, new artwork's been commissioned, and um, they've uh, put these cards together. Now, the card decks are a little bit different. I did get this little bonus set here. I believe it used to say Deck Master at the bottom, but um, uh, was it Black Chantry? Um, when they've redone these, they've... Um, basically given you um, exactly the same as the original sets but obviously they've tweaked it slightly and slightly tidied up the uh, layout now these are all crypt cards as they're known and they are your vampires but in the game itself um, you get a library which uh, you use to fill your hand and my understanding is you always have a hand side of seven cards so if you ever drop below seven you draw back up straight away to seven cards you then have the crypt cards which is where you summon vampires to do your bidding because you actually play the part of an ancient vampire as it says on the back box here uh, a, Meth a methuselah now this is very heavily based on the world of darkness vampire the masquerade game and um, obviously as we've got to fifth edition of that version of the role-playing game, it's, it's great that we've also got a fifth edition of Vampire the Eternal Struggle. Now, inside here, there are five decks and a load of tokens. So let's get the box open. Now, on lifting the lid up, uh, what we're greeted by is the very good rule book, uh, which you can download as a PDF. Uh, it's quite comprehensive. It goes to 53 pages, although not all of it is rules, I'm glad to say. Um, You've got a quick reference of the Disciples, both in their basic and advanced format, the card types and the clans, as well as some other information. Now, if you're not aware of how Vampire the Masquerade was set up, is um, you had the Masquerade where you had the various clans um, working in what's known as the Camarilla to try and hide the fact of vampires being real from the real world. You then had, um, I believe it was the Anarchs and Sabbat, and um, they were sort of opposed to the cam Camarilla. Now, underneath the rulebook, you've got some quick references for the various starter decks that are inside, and uh, you can, I believe, download those as well. You've then got several sheets of fairly thick tokens, which represent your blood. Um, I'm going to be using glass beads and using these tokens as a backup. You also get this nice big token, which is called the Edge, which gives you a, a slight advantage in the game. And then right at the bottom here, you've got the various decks. So we've got the Malkavian, which are the sort of insane vampires. I think, is this the Anarchs? Oh, this is the Toreador, the artistic performers. This is the Ventru, so uh, they're the sort of royalty This is the Tremere, um, which are very secretive, and they have what's known as blood sorcery. And then this is probably Nosferatu, is it? Yeah, and this is Nosferatu, who are cursed with being ugly and therefore makes it very difficult for them to venture out into the real world without being spotted. So they're very good at subterfuge. Now, as I mentioned, I did get these bonus cards. I'm not sure why I got them, uh, but it's a very nice little touch. And these are some vampires. So, for example, this guy here, that's a Nosferatu. And um, these icons here uh, help identify the clan. And then these icons here are the powers that they have. This is how senior they are. Uh, and this is uh, their age and how much blood they have. And this is a, actually a baron, so this is quite a powerful person. So, baron. Ah, these are all barons, in fact. Okay, right. So, um, these represent the different um, factions, and a baron is a, a pretty heavy weight uh, vampire. And they're identified as crypt cards via this sort of browny colour. So, let's pop open uh, one of these packets. 
Now straight away I can tell you the these are lovely uh, boxes but uh, they're totally useless if you're going to sleeve your card and if you're playing a CCG you're going to want to um, sleeve your card. So um, basically uh, be aware of that and also you're going to have to unwrap um, your cards once you get into the packaging. Now one thing I will say, um, unlike Magic the Gathering which is a sort of a one versus one game where there are also rules for multiplayer, uh, Vampire was designed for uh, multiplayer from the start so I think it's three, four or five is a, a good number with most people saying four or five is best. And what you do is you attack the person to your left, known as your prey, and you're trying to defend yourself from the right, the person known as your predator. But you can actually play cards that influence people, I think, potentially all around the board. Um, and basically, killing your prey is good for you mechanically. And at the end of the game, you calculate victory points uh, to determine who's actually won the particular um, sort of action that's been going on during the game. And uh, that means you can actually be taken out uh, earlier in the game, but potentially still win because of your victory points. So that's uh, an interesting thing. Anyway, let's uh, strip this open. I haven't got into the um, cards. They look pretty good quality. Um, we've got a little quick reference card here with the turn sequence, the disciplines, the clans, titles, sect. Uh, titles are important for something called voting. And seating order first, apparently. So interesting. Uh, these are library cards because they've got green backs and there's quite a lot of them and then you've got your crypt cards in this sort of browny colour. Now my understanding is the deck building rules are there are no limits on cards if you want to have 20 of the same vampire in your crypt. In theory you can, it'd be a very stupid idea but maybe you've come up with a deck idea where that actually works for you. Uh, I believe the minimum is 12 cards in your crypt. And when you start the game, four of these will be dealt out. You then have a limit of 60 or 70, I want to say, for your library. And you draw a hand of seven and then you um, deal them out. Now, we've already had a little quick peek. So typically you've got a name, the set it came from, which faction it belongs to, a nice pretty picture, some text, the icons here, which tell you what powers they have. And this links to... Uh, the Masquerade uh, role-playing game. But also there are cards in your library, so let's have a quick look. So that's not a good example. Let's have a look for another one. Uh, here you go. So this card here has this symbol here. So what you're looking for is, does your vampire have the similar symbol? Well, this one does. He's got this symbol here. And um, you'll notice that he's got some square and some diamond. So that's to do with whether he's basic or advanced. So diamond is better. So on some cards, you're looking for this symbol and as you can see here it says if you've got the symbol you can do a directed action where you bleed for plus two bleed however if you've got the advanced symbol which this example here does have you bleed with plus one stealth and add three blood to a younger vampire in your uncontrolled region and it costs your vampire one blood to do this action now, when it comes to the age, this number here tends to be used for the age. This is um, more for um, how you actually play your deck, I believe. Um, I forget the official title for it now. I want to say rank, but I don't think that's the right term. Anyway, looking at these cards, you'll see this card here uh, needs this symbol. So uh, I believe that is Malkavian. And it's going to cost you two blood. Now, because it's a diamond, it costs you personally two blood. Because the way the game actually works is you start off with a blood pool of 30 blood tokens. And to summon these vampires, you, you move blood from your blood pool uh, in what's known as the influence phase. And you, you put them on these cards. And when you've got the same amount of blood tokens on them as this number here, you can move these from your crypt in or your uncontrolled region into active play and you flip them face up and they actually become active. So when you're playing cards, you need to look for who's paying blood to what. So this means that you personally play blood, whereas the other card I showed you with the red blood symbol uh, means the vampire plays cards. So this is uh, a unique location. We've got a few of those. And you'll also notice here, 
a bit hard to spot, but it says this is a master card. So this is played in a particular phase called the master phase. Then we've got um, modifiers here, which um, you would, if I remember correctly, attach to something you're doing. And there's um, quite a few of them. So as you can see, cards of pretty nice quality. So here you go, here's the other symbol. So this means a vampire pays for this. So you, if you've got the right symbol, you modify the vampire itself pays blood, only usable during a bleed action, plus two bleed, or if they're advanced, plus three bleed. And there's all sorts of keywords, so it can be quite a complex game. This is a nice funky card. This uh, allows you to deflect the bleed action to someone else. Then we've got uh, a master card which you put tokens on. So there you go. So that's all the master cards. There's quite a few of those. Then we've got um, some reactions here. Quite a few of that one. The Eyes of Argus. We've got Faceless Knight. Foreshadowing Distortion. Destruction, Govern the Unaligned, loads and loads of those. Yeah, loads and loads of those. Uh, Life in the City. Now, this is another master card, but this is what's known as a trifle. So you've got master cards and then various types of master cards. So as you can see, if you've never played a CCG, this is quite complex. But the actual basics of the game is pretty simple. And yeah, these feel really good, but they are going to get sleeved. Um, they've got a slightly plasticky feel. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really impressed by that. Um, so let's have a look at the vampires. So we've got this quite uh, advanced guy. You'll notice he's the Camarilla Prince of Birmingham. Now, there are some political phases in the game when you can contest who is the Prince of Birmingham. Now, for some reason, we've got two of him, maybe to help us draw. Uh, then we've got Camarilla Prince of Tapai. Uh, so we've got two of them, one of Ashley, one of Colette, one of Donny, no, two of Donny, one of Dr. Stephen Norton, one of that, one of that, one of that. Now, vampires typically are unique, so if I play Sully, I can't play another Sully. And in fact, if anyone else plays Sully, potentially that could lead to what's known as a contest, and, and that's likely to be over someone like this who's actually important um, and so there's all sorts of weird and wonderful phases in the game so let's just quickly run through them so the first phase let me find my notes here is the unlock phase so when you use a card you tap it or lock it so you have an unlock phase where you untap it you then have the master phase which is where you can play the cards with the word master on them so we had a load of those down at the bottom here didn't we so let's grab one of those so this card here is a master card, so I could play it in the second phase, the master phase. Now, some of these cards you can play as a reaction out of turn, but if you do that, you have used your master phase card. So when it's your turn, you, you know, you can't play a second master. You then have the minion phase, which is where you do things like, oh, this guy's gonna try and bleed you, and he goes in to bite you effectively. And you can then, as an opponent, choose to block that and you play all sorts of cards and there's quite a lot going on in that phase. Once you've done that, you then got your influence phase. Now, influence phase, you're going to have your four crypt cards face down and that's where you move these tokens over here. Um, you move them into play. So you can um, either do what's known as burn a blood token, so you discard a blood token from your personal pool to the generic blood bank uh, that everyone uses and that will allow you to draw an extra crypt card from your crypt deck and put it face down in the sort of uncontrolled play area. Alternatively you can use what's known as two um, of your tasks to um, take one blood uh, from a vampire in play and, and retrieve it back to your personal blood pool. Or alternatively, you can move one blood token per task from your pool onto a vampire. And you have four tasks in the influence phase, or transfer, I believe is the official name for them. So, for example, you could use two of those transfers to return a blood token from a vampire to your personal pool, and then use two of your other transfers to transfer two blood from your pool onto face-down vampires that you want to reveal.
Obviously, once all your vampires have been taken out, uh, you're going to need to draw fresh vampires from the crypt. So you're potentially going to have to use all four of your transfers to draw a new vampire. But it doesn't come into play. It, it, it comes into the, uh, what's known as an uncontrolled area face down. You then have the discard phase, where normally you've only got one discard. So you discard a card, and that helps you cycle through your library. So once you've learned how your particular deck works, you'll know oh, what I want to do is I want to you know, rifle through and find these Govern the Unaligned. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and bleed my opponent. So when you bleed an opponent, you force them to discard blood from their blood pool. If they run out of blood, they're taken out of the game. You get a victory point and you actually get six bonus blood from the generic bank. And um, that, that's a really good move, obviously. So that's basically a very quick look at the game and you know the card quality decent thickness decent feel but i i wouldn't play this without sleeves um in fact my sleeve obsession came about from playing uh, magic the gathering back in uh, the fourth edition era and yeah this game was always on my radar it initially was called jihad i believe and then a year later, they renamed it to the Eternal Struggle. And at that stage, uh, there suddenly seemed to be a load of uh, really cheap boosters in the bargain bucket at my local game store. So I was really tempted to get into it, but I never quite did. But I really like the fact that this is a sort of social card game where you're trying to do a lot of politics and wheedle deals. Because some of the actions you can actually do is you can call for a vote. And then you calculate who's got the most votes, whoever's got the most votes um, can agree or disagree with the terms of the contract that you're trying to do. And there's cards that when you play, they're like, this is a political action. Now, this particular deck, I believe, doesn't really do much in the way of politics. It's more about um, getting a little bit of stealth, which allows you to sneak past people and bleed them. So basically, this is almost like, a, if you want to use Magic the Gathering terms, this is like a... I guess a red lightning bolt deck so that's the way i would describe it that's a very crude approximation whereas the other decks are slightly different now i believe this deck here the event true that's probably going to be high on uh, politics and if you actually read the back of the box so this deck applies constant pressure with both nefarious politics and heavy bleeding using presence and dominate your vampires are tireless fueled with fortitude and can do multiple actions towards your enemy. Your defences are sturdy with resilient minions. Whereas the Malkavians, this deck is a fast machine of devastation. Your vampires use Obfuscate, which is a form of stealth, uh, to sneak past blockers and deliver heavy bleed attacks powered by domination. Your combat defence is limited, but who needs protection when your rivals are already ousted? So this is a, an all-out red sort of burn deck. Um, I noticed it's even got red on the back here, so maybe uh, they're tapping into that sort of aspect of Magic the Gathering. Now this game, uh, before you think, well, they copied some stuff from Magic, it was actually designed by Richard Garfield, so there you go. We're now going to look at Nosferatu. Now Nosferatu is a deck that slowly builds uh, with animal servants and other precautionary measures. You scare off early aggressors and lay traps for them. Then you strike with potence and animalism. So this is a, a slightly slower burn deck, uh, maybe a little bit bluish. Um, as you can see, they recommend this goes second. So we've got some great uh, characters in here. So we've got uh, Aunt Linda, Baxin, oh dear, Baxino, Belinda, the Dowager, Horace, Larissa, a couple of them, Lenny, couple of him, Ryan, Wanuka, and then Carrion Crows, which is a ranged attack. Now in combat, unlike uh, magic, you don't just necessarily attack, you've got close range and long range. So this does two ranged environmental damage if you've got an advanced uh, vampire or just one ranged if you've got a basic vampire. Now obviously if you're at range, uh, people can't touch you if they've only got close combat, so watch out for that. Um, and this is where this being an older game uh, sometimes uh, shows up with lots of little fiddly, interesting, tactical, throw the kitchen sink at it uh, sort of issues. So we've got Cat's Guidance, loads of those, Creeping Sabotage, lots and lots. Deep Song, now this is a pretty nasty card. Uh, bleed with plus one bleed, 
If you're advanced, you can frenzy, enter combat with and lock a vampire. That target vampire is considered the acting minion during that combat. So, loads and loads of deep song. Fame, uh, this um, mucks you up. This is a master card, as you can see. Put this card on a ready vampire. The controller of this vampire must burn three pool after this vampire goes to torpor. Now, if you remove all the blood tokens off a vampire, it um, doesn't die. It goes into a state known as torpor, and that's where you can actually deliver what's known in Vampire as the final death. Uh, so we've got Guard Dogs, which are the minions that help you. Uh, Guardian Angel, Heaven Uncovered, Immortal Grapple, seem to have quite a few of those, Instinctive Reaction, the Labyrinth, classic Nosferatu here. Lost in the Crowds, now this is a great way if you do an attack and it doesn't work, you, I believe you play Lost in the Crowd and you sort of disappear. Murder of Crows, now on the qui vive, uh, this is a way of taking what's known as a, a locked vampire and making it suddenly act as a blocker, which it can't normally do. Prenatural strength, so increases your stealth, um, and you've got stealth and um, interdiction or something, I can't remember the term just now. This requires what's known as a primogen, only usable during a bleed action against you, uh, uh, during a polling step, so... You know, this is a very situational card, but you've got quite a few of those. We've got Raven Spy, you've got Rebels, you've got Roundhouse Punch, basically. Uh, quite a few of those. Slum Hunting Ground, so unique location. During your unlock phase, a ready vampire you control can gain a blood, and I believe that comes from the pool. Smiling Jack, now you might know him if you've played the um, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines game. Great character. Taste of Vitae, so Vitae is blood. Underbridge Stray, so a little doggy. Vessel, so this is a trifling card. And we've got loads of those apparently. Then we've got the Warrens. And I'm going to drop all these cards. And Warsaw Station. So yeah, um, as you can see, totally different set of cards. Um, so if you're trying to learn how to play all of these decks, uh, you're going to have to get to grips quite quickly with the various cards. And because this is an older game, I think there are close to 4,000 cards out there that you'd have to memorize. So good luck. Um, it is possible. Um, but a lot of the cards are, are more common. Let's go on to the third seating order here. So our little pretty boys looking a bit like Kiss, the Toreador. This deck will establish political control of the game and reap heavy rewards. Trick the opponents into blocking the wrong actions and sneak through your blows. So basically this is a, a politics heavy deck. So you're trying to call votes and trying to dominate the vote. So we've got um, quite a few here. So intercept, here you go. So it's intercept is how you try and block someone and sneak is how you get past them. So if your intercept is lower than their sneak you can't block them so you have to modify your intercept value so this person's not very good at blocking so you see lots of musical people and artistic people so this ties into the law and there's our nick sicko anyway that's all of our crypt cards then we get into our library cards here so air of elation payable by the vampire art museum payable by you the witch oration this is quite good so only usable during the polling step of a political action this vampire gets plus two votes if they're advanced they get plus four votes so you know you're more likely to win the election change of target so if it's blocked before you do the block resolution you can change things consanguineous boon now choose a clan successful referendum means each methuselah gains one pool for each vampire of the chosen clan so this is a sort of heal yourself uh, as long as you win the election and this deck is very good at winning elections creep show casino elysium enchant kindred keen resource contested now keen i believe is a word for humans and kindred is a word for vampires. Oh, there's loads and loads of those. So allocate four points among two or more Methuselahs. Successful referendum means each Methuselah burns one pool for each point allocated. So basically you're, you're yeah, sending uh, humans to hunt them down, I guess. Majesty, this is a strike. Um, but yeah, 
it's a good way of just ending a combat that you're likely to lose parity shift now this you can actually get as a play mat i believe this picture requires a prince or adjust a car choose a methuselah who has more pool than you do and allocate three of their pool between one or more of your of the other methuselahs including yourself so you're damaging them and healing you and uh some of the cards aren't very good at putting this but a political action always counts as one vote but here they have actually written the word one vote i'm pleased to say and also some cards automatically give you stealth but it doesn't always tell you perfect paragon resist the earth's grasp this is a, a way of getting some extra stealth scalpel tongue this is again a voting thing and it's a reaction card second tradition okay prince or just a car society hunting ground unique location torridor grand ball torridor just a car villain this is a trifling master card so put this card on a vampire you control who has any amount of blood and move two to five blood from that vampire to you basically minion tap costs you one additional pool villain costs one additional pool to play on this vampire so i'm gonna have to look up what that means i know there's been some rulings on this and i think they've changed the wordings a few times voter captivation only usable after the resolution of political action whose referendum passed this vampire gains a blood as above but two okay nice and there's loads of those so this deck um is less about uh, i guess damaging other people it's about outlasting them and then hopefully you've established control and go in for the kill so the next cards we're going to look at is card set number four here and this deck here is the Tremere. So this deck is a flexible toolbox. You can either build slowly, get an equipment and muster in many vampires or put constant pressure on your prey with dominate powered bleed actions. So yeah, I quite like the sound of this. This might be the deck I want to play. Um, so let's have a look. So we've got a couple of our prints. We've got Primogen, person from the cover here. Got a couple of them, Lauren, Lloyd, Nasir. And you'll notice how often these are very unique and you might get a couple of them uh, i believe there are some cards where they have a little icon underneath here and that's like an advanced version of this person so you can sort of upgrade if you played this card to the advanced version of that person so that's our crypt cards we then as you can see got a new type of card which you haven't seen much of a, a, a equipment card and that's this little pistol icon here so this is something you attach to a vampire and it gives two ranged damage with one optional maneuver each combat so you can do more than one maneuver which is quite nice uh, academic hunting ground apparition or apparition uh, press so press i believe is when you continue fighting arcane library bonding so whilst you're bleeding this uh, gives you some extra tricks Bowl of Convergence, it's unique, bear with Auspex, this icon gets plus one intercept and they can burn blood to gain intercept. Chantry, which is a location, Deflection, we've sort of seen in one of the other decks. Eyes of Argus, we've seen in one of the other decks. Govern the Unaligned, we've seen that, that's another common card, and look at that, we got loads and loads of those. So no four card limit like magic in this. Kevlar Vest, so makes you uh, less likely to take damage. Magic of the Smith, stealth action. Search your library for an equipment card and equip the vampire with it. Nice. Mirror Walk, do not replace until your discard phase, gives you stealth. Now you notice some of these that the text box is quite big and the text in it quite small. Quite a few of those. Misdirection, lock any minion, so just tap something down. On the QV, five we've seen that before now i don't think we've seen this uh, pentix subversion unique put this card on a ready minion this minion cannot block any other minion can burn this card as a directive action so basically it's just a way of locking down someone you are a bit annoyed by precognition intercept as above preventing damage and there's also some nice flavor text on a few of these cards spirits touch again giving you intercept so um, this means you're good at blocking by having lots of intercept whereas stealth means you're good at sneaking past people sport bike telepathic misdirection this is a very good way at trying to like intercept people and block stuff theft of vitae a range strike stealing one blood 
all life becoming blood. So basically you, you take life off uh, someone who blocks you. Quite a few of those. Then Vessel, which I believe we've seen before. Wasserschloss and Nif. Apologies to my Austrian friends. And then a wider view, which I think we might have seen briefly in another deck. So you'll notice there are some common, what I would call like utility cards that lots of decks use. And, um, you know, that, that could be a problem for you if you're trying to build a nice collection of cards. But for playable decks, it's, it's good to have lots. And then we have our final deck, our little political machinations here, the Ventru. So this deck applies constant pressure with nefarious politics and bleeding. So this is recommended to sit in the fifth spot. So we've got Alexa Draper, Alice Chen, Brock, right brick of a bloke he is, Chelsea Blake, Horst, Madison, Naomi, Oshri, Sibren, and then that's it for our crypt. Then library Anik troubleshooter. Now this card seems to wander around, and there are some rules that there are people who own cards and people who control cards. So I own this card, so at the end of the game this card comes back to me. But other people during the game could potentially control it. So just be aware that some cards do wander around. So if you're sleeving your cards, you might want to sleeve each deck in different sleeves, so it's a bit easier to work out what stuff's yours. Right, so we've got Ancilia Empowerment, that's new, Bewitching Oration, we've seen that before, Blood Dole, we've seen that one before, Conditioning, seen that one before, Daring the Dawn, um, obviously bad for a vampire, you can get yourself burnt, uh, Deflection, seen that one before, Enchant Kindred, again, I think we've seen that one before, Freak Drive, that's new, I think, I don't think we've seen that in any of the other decks, Hidden Strength, again, I think that's new, Information Highway, that's new, gives you extra transfers, which means getting stuff out is quite good. Intimidation, um, extra bleed by the looks of it on that one. Keen Resources, we've seen that one before. Loads and loads of that. Majesty, again, another card we've seen in other decks. Misdirection, Priority Shift, Second Tradition Domain, Uptown Hunting Ground, another new Master card. Voter Captivation, Wake with Evening's Freshness. Now, I don't think we've seen this one before. On a locked vampire, i.e. a tapped one, do not replace until your unlock phase. This vampire wakes. They ignore the requirement to be unlocked for playing reaction cards and attempting to block until the end of the action. So it's a good way of saying, ha, ah, I've got no blockers. Aha, I do actually. And the wider view. So as you can see, definitely some utility cards that are in every single deck and uh, a few fresh cards. Uh, but mostly where you're going to get unique stuff is in your crypt. So this person here, during the polling step of any referendum, Alexia can discard a card requiring dominate to get plus one vote. So that can be pretty powerful. And they're eight blood, so they're very expensive to get out, but quite hard to get rid of. So yeah, that is the cards that actually come in the fifth edition. And as I say, I've been very nicely sent some uh, Baron promo cards, I assume. And uh, these feel very similar to the cards that came in the box set, so I'm assuming these are drive-through RPG print-on-demand cards, maybe. And um, yeah, they're pretty impressive. And obviously, um, you've got different people for different factions. The tokens, uh, they're pretty good. Nice and thick. Hopefully they're gonna punch out nicely. And I think this is a really nice little set um, for somebody who wants to get into Vampire The Eternal Struggle. I like the fact that we've got um, these reference guides here. So on the back here, it's got a strategy guide for the Ventry. So your overall strategy, early game, mid game, late game, some tips, how to defend yourself, and a deck list. This does the same for the Tremere. The Toreador. Nosferatu and of course the Markavian. So these are really really useful for someone where you chuck them the deck and say right have a read of this this will tell you how your deck plays and then on the other side you've just got an overview of how to do things so it talks about the unlock phase, your master phase, your minion phase, what you can do on your turn, what you can do out of turn, the influence phase with these transfers, the discard phase 
and then if you're doing an action in the minion phase here's how you do your action the action types one of the actions you can do is to call a referendum a vote a poll that's listed here and then if you get involved in combat because one of your actions is you attack and someone tries to block what happens there and then assuming you get to what's known as the strike phase what happens there so yeah that's uh, quite a useful little reference sheet and uh, going to become very useful for teaching people how to play this now as i say um it's going to be quite hard to do another video for this until i've actually got this to the table and of course being a, a card game i'm going to want to play it face to face uh, you can play it virtually but i think that makes it a little bit harder until you know how to play but in the meantime if you want to learn more about this game um, download the rule book from the website black chantry and let's uh, here you go so uh, they've got their own website and they're also on facebook they're also on various social media so go check them out and i'm really looking forward to seeing how they develop this game now that they've got uh, permission to keep it going and i think you should check out the kickstarter that's currently running where they're going to bring some classic uh, pdf only card expansions into actual print and there's even uh, a limited selection of all-in uh, bits where you can get the fifth edition set and every single product that uh, black chantry's actually produced although it is quite expensive because you get in something like two three thousand cards anyway there you go uh, i think that will do for now i'm gonna hopefully return to this game at a later date and talk to you a bit more about it so i hope you've enjoyed a look at vampire the eternal struggle fifth edition box set